Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Bill Richter at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. This is our Wednesday prayer service for peace, love, and hope. We're delighted that you've joined us today. We hope you find this short service a, a time of respite from a, a busy week and uh, that you will take this opportunity to check out the church website. I'll put the address up at the end of the service. And if you see anything that is of interest and you have need for additional information or if you have questions, please feel free to call the office and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, this is a relatively new format for this service, so we appreciate you hanging with us in a new area. And uh, I'm glad you're here, and I know the larger community appreciates our ability to bring this to you. And we begin with our opening sentence. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and honor. God is my strong rock and refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Put your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all good works. Give us, your servants, that peace that the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And now a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came into the world to remind us, to be a constant reminder that the grace, love, mercy, and compassion are ours as a gift from God. Our heart's desire is within reach. It is not only a future hope, but it is a present reality. We hear this, we read it, we pray it, we sing about it, but then we tend to easily ignore it. We seem to be more concerned with what is wrong than with what is right. We could all probably make an exhaustive list of the things that are going wrong in the world, how things are falling apart and nothing holds anymore, nothing really makes any sense to us. And those are valid concerns. My thinking is, why worry about what is wrong? Why worry about the, the, the negative issues? Why worry about the poison and the negativity when we have a positive solution at hand? God has come to relieve us from, from fear and anxiety and worry, and Jesus has come to bring us a peace of God that passes all understanding, as Paul writes about in Philippians. Love will carry us through tough, uncertain times. With Jesus, when there seems to be an end, when things seem to be falling apart and coming, coming loose at the seams, there is always the opportunity for a beginning. This is what resurrection is all about. Time and time and time again, 
Christianity thought that, that the church was falling apart. The Jews thought that they had lost their religion when they were put in captivity in Babylon, when the temple was destroyed around the year 70. And yet, none of these things could stamp out either of those religions. The people persisted because God was with them and God was present. We've been through lots of stuff in the last 100 years. There's no question about that. We will continue to experience upheaval, things falling apart, new things coming into focus. But God is at work in all of that. God is a part of bringing new things to life, bringing new things into focus, making what seems to be impossible in the thinking of the world to be a real possibility for all of us. When we seek to keep the problems at bay, we are actually keeping Jesus at bay. We need to think about the healing. We need to think about the, the solution and the antidote rather than the problem so much. Jesus has come to show us our true way home, this peace that passes all understanding that, that, that Paul talks about. Jesus has come to say that, that I am bringing you a way of life. I am bringing you a way of truth. I am bringing you a way of peace. I give peace to you, but it is not like the peace of the world. It is not logical, rational, practical in any sense of the way. It stands above those things. It, it, is, it is transcending those things. Rather than a place, a status, a position, our home is about relationship and relatedness. It is a right relationship with God, one based in mutual forgiveness, reunion and reconciliation. And we live that out by being reunited and reconciled with each other and the, and the things in this world which we have such great problems with. The solution to our problem is a peace that only Jesus can give. It is a peace that will dwell in our hearts and ultimately be a part of everything that we see and everything that we do. That's, that's the goal here. Leading us into all truth means leading us into a, a, an expansive understanding of the power of peace. The world scoffs at this and says we're crazy, saying that it will never work. But it has worked, it has taken the people of God through many, many difficult and dark circumstances, and here we are today. Peace I will leave with you. My own peace I give to you, but I do not give to you as the world gives. Look for the uncommon gift. Look for the irrational solution that we find in the love of God that is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. The living God, the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, show us a way to real lasting peace. This is our path. This is our journey. Most of it is predicated on us just getting out of God's way, getting out of our own way, and not getting caught up in the things of, of this world that, that have nothing to do with love, peace, and the other spiritual gifts that Paul writes about in his letters. Amen. Before we begin the litany for peace in troubled times, I'm going to invite us into a time of meditation and quiet reflection. The idea is, is to bring some peace into our hearts, bring some peace into our thoughts, and to be able to just sit in this moment free from, free from any kind of judgment or worry or concern. It helps to focus. We focus on our breathing most of the time. Maybe this evening you could try focusing on your breathing with an intention to breathe in peace and to breathe out anxiety and fear and see how that works for you. Still focusing on that breath, but thinking about taking in peace that is in the world all around us and breathing out fear, which may reside in the darker recesses of our hearts. That's not absolutely necessary. You can simply focus on your breathing, maybe the sensation of air moving in and out of your nostrils or the sensation of your chest rising and falling as you breathe. But the idea is to just be present in this moment, to be centered and quiet and at peace. I will ring a bell for us to start 
and our meditation will end with the beginning of the litany.
a litany for peace in troubled times. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy on us. Holy and blessed Trinity, one God, Lord, have mercy on us. In these days of trouble, fear, and sorrow, in our despair at the violence that seems to fill the world, in the pain of lost life and shattered hopes, in our grieving for those who have died, in our compassion for all who are bereaved, from the history of violence which corrupts every society and our own, from the greed and injustice that divides the world into rich and poor, Lord, have mercy on us. From the urge for revenge that adds to the cycle of violence, from the fear that grows into hatred for people who are different, from being too quick to attribute blame and demand retribution, from believing ourselves safe through anything other than your grace, Lord, have mercy on us. For those who plan and carry out acts of violence, for all who seek justice and ensure the rule of law, for the victims of war and terrorism everywhere on earth, for all who live in fear, and for refugees from violent regimes, for courage to resist demonizing and dehumanizing others, Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom in choosing the path of peace, for solidarity with the suffering and dispossessed, for generosity in sharing fairly the world's resources, for respect and conversation with people of other faiths and none, for honesty in knowing and confessing the sin in our own hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to change and be changed as you forgive us, for rescue workers and medical teams treating those injured in conflict zones, for aid agencies and their workers, responding with practical care in dangerous places. For the leaders of all the nations, looking for ways to work together beyond fear and suspicion. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of goodwill, responding generously to the needs of suffering communities. For all who have friends and family involved in areas of conflict and disaster. For communities that are terrified by missiles, snipers, vigilantes, or death squads, for the vulnerable and defenseless in conflict zones, for the children, the elderly, the disabled, the sick. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christ to bring all the peoples of the world into one flock with one shepherd. For Christ to bring healing and comfort to those we love who are sick or in mourning. For Christ to lead us into the paths of peace, writing the law of love on our hearts. For Christ to bring us with all who have died in faith to a joyful resurrection. We pray to you, O Lord. God of all peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world and on your people who cry out to you for healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And now please join me in the prayer that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace go with you. God's quiet within the noise. God's hope within uncertainty. God's rest within the toil. God's presence in your soul. Peace go with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.